1864. A young Confederate officer was tried by, for desertion by a general courts martial <coughs> convened here at Sabine Pass, Texas. We have newspaper accounts and some eyewitness recollection of the execution, but we do not have all the facts about the trial. So we must confess to the use of some dramatic license and compression of time in order to bring you the following presentation. We appreciate your indulgence. By command of Major General J. Bankhead Magruder, in pursuit of Special Order Number 191, dated 19 July 1864, this General Court Martial is hereby called to order. Let's get started, gentlemen. Let's bring in the prisoner. From headquarters, District of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Houston, Texas, dated 2nd August 1864, General Orders Number 165, by command of Major General J. Bankham McGruder. A general court martial is to be convened at Sabine Pass, Texas, at approximately 1300 on the second day of August 1864, in pursuance of Special Order Number 191, Part 2, dated 19 July 1864, to determine disposition charges preferred against Second Lieutenant Elijah P. Allen on the 18th of April, 1864. Detail for the court is, is as follows. Colonel Ashby Spate, 21st Texas Volunteers, President of the Court. Lieutenant Colonel William Griffin, 21st Texas Volunteers, Infantry. First Officer of the Court, Major Richard, Double Dow Richard W. Dowling, 1st Texas Heavy Volunteer Artillery. Officer of the Court, Captain Jonathan J. Cohn, 21st Texas Volunteers, Infantry, Judge Advocate General. Lieutenant Allen, do you have any objections to any member present here? Sir, I do not, sir. Sirs, if you will please stand, I will administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. You, Colonel Spates, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Griffin, Major Dowling, do swear that you will well and truly try to determine the facts of this case for the purpose of rendering an unprejudiced verdict as to the innocence or guilt of the accused, so help you God. I do. Captain Cohn, do you swear that you will prosecute this case in the name of the Confederate States, but shall as well adhere to your duty to provide fair counsel to the accused? So help you God. I do. Please read the charges, Captain. <clears throat> yes, sir. Second Lieutenant Elijah P. Allen, in service to an unattached, unattached company of 1st Texas State Regiment of Cavalry, was arraigned on the following charges of specifications. First charge of specification desertion. Substance. That the accused at High Island, Texas, on the 11th of March, 1864, Desert his assigned post in the service to the state of Texas and the Confederate States of America. Second charge of specification, advising desertion. Substance, that the accused at High Island, Texas on, on 1 March 1864 and diverse times between that time and the 11th of March 1864, did advise his men under his command to desert their assigned post in the service to the state of Texas and the Confederate States of America. Lieutenant. Allen, you have heard the charges preferred against you. How say you, guilty or not guilty? Sir! 
Hi, Alan. Was nothing but praying, bitch. Lieutenant yeah, Allen. Not any good water. Lieutenant Allen. Sir. You're in the court. Yes, sir. Nothing exculpatory can be at this time received. No special justification can be offered as a plea, such as a anticipation of a defense. Simply answer guilty or not guilty. Mr. President, I hope you accept my apology, sir, for my actions. I plead not guilty. Plea being recorded, all persons giving testimony in these proceedings can now retire until call for. Judge Advocate, you may begin your prosecution. The plea having been recorded, I call the first witness, Captain James H. Patilio. Raise your right hand, Captain. Do you swear the testimony you're about to be given will be truthful and without prejudice, so help you God? I do, sir. At ease, Captain. State your name and rank for the record. Sir, James Patillo, Captain. Captain, what was your post from December 1863 until April of this year? During that time, I was commander of an unattached cavalry company with the 1st State Texas Troops in High Island. In March, I became ill and was granted permission to convalesce at home. I reported back for duty in April. What was the strength of your company? During the period of time specified, four officers and 17 enlisted men. We only had 14 serviceable horses. I care a little for the livestock, sir. Do you know the accused here? Yes, Captain. That is Elijah Allen, second lieutenant of my company. Was he duly enlisted and receiving pay from the Confederate States of America and the state of Texas? Yes. Did Lieutenant Allen or any other man from your company have permission to take leave in March of, 18, uh, in March of this year? One private, Rogers. He was my driver and assisted me home to Polk County but he was to return to High Island promptly. Upon my return a month later, I found no one at the company at their post. After three days, still no one reported. And your report? I rode here to Sabine Pass and reported to Colonel Griffin. Several men at the company were located over the next few days and were placed under arrest, including Lieutenant Allen and Lieutenants Cooper and Adams as well. Lieutenant Allen, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, sir. Captain Patillo, sir, was I a good soldier? Did I do all my duty faithfully under your orders, sir? Why, yes, Lieutenant. I judged you a good officer. I only wish you had stayed strong in your duty, though. Sir, uh, this witness, he is no good to me anymore. I have nothing else to say. You're dismissed, Captain. I call Private H or Henry, a Henry R. Taylor. Private Taylor, raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to be given will be truthful and without prejudice, so help you God? I do. That is Private. State your name and rank for the record. Private Henry Taylor, uh, first uh, dismounted cavalry over to High Island, sir. Were you on post for your company at High Island in December until March of this year? Yes, sir. Uh, we come out of Beaumont uh, end of Jan uh, December, 1st of January. I can't recollect what day exactly. We were there up till we left. It was a real bad situation over there. Uh, did you remain at your post until properly relieved? Uh, no, sir, I didn't. <clears throat> do you know Lieutenant Allen? Yes, sir, I do. Please describe your conditions at which you were assigned at this post, Father. Ted, conditions were terrible. I mean, we got there and mosquitoes were really bad. We had no, no mail, no pay. We had been paid, and I can't remember when. No mail, nobody came to check on us. It was atrocious. Nighttime fleas would tear us up. We couldn't sleep good at night. The mounts we had were unserviceable. We had to make patrols on foot. We look out there in the Gulf, it was Yankee blockaders. There was nothing there in High Island they wanted. Not even any boarding, uh, shore parties come ashore. It was a dull thing and trust it. And the water there was really bad. Let's be clear, Private Taylor. <clears throat> Is it our understanding that Lieutenant Allen advised you and other men of your company to quit your assigned post without permission from higher authority? Yes, sir. It's dead. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Private Taylor. Lieutenant Allen, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do, sir. Private Taylor, did we ever receive any notification, pay, provisions, or any kind of help from our command or our army? No, sir, we did not. It could have snowed in Galveston. We wouldn't have known it. Nobody cared nothing about us. They just left us out there at our own peril. You know, we had to sc scrounge our own food, forage, and uh, hunt for our own meat. And, and again, the water was bad. 
Prophet Taylor, what was your punishment for your offense? Well, you told us that, you know, so that we, we sit there and talked about it. We, we could go home since the list was pretty well up, and nobody would care. But they did. I'm here to tell you, when they fetched us, they cared. I got four months hard labor building fortifications over there at Galveston. And I still got 44 days left when I leave here today. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, Private Allen. I'm sorry what I've done. This is all I have for this witness. Witness is dismissed. That concludes the witness testimony for the prosecution. <laughs> Lieutenant Allen, you have requested no one to appear in your defense. At this time, do you wish to address the court or call anyone to speak on your behalf? Sir, I would like this to be the court. Sir, I would like to address the court. The prisoner may address the court. Sir, I have little to say to mitigate my actions. I swore an oath to defend this land, this state, in this country. But in that same oath, I swore a pledge to my men. And they were all brave men, every one of them. They were ready to die from the lead and steel and shot of our enemies. They were no cowards of monsters, but I thought of it worse that they'd all die. And we even all die from the vermin, the thirst and hunger left upon us by the neglect of our own government and our own army. Sir, what about my duty to my men? What comes first, my men or my country? Now, all, all I can say is, I know I left without the proper military authority and permission, but I left under a higher authority, and that is God of Almighty, and now I put my fate in his hands, sir. Officers of the court, I contend the testimony offered here today by sworn witnesses clearly in the case that Second Lieutenant Elijah P. Allen is guilty of the first charge of specification of desertion and the second charge of specification of inciting others to desert. Should he be found guilty, I must remind you that the punishment prescribed for this offense is clearly defined by the Articles of War 2021 20, and 23. The court will now be cleared for our deliberation. Officers of the court, having heard all that's been offered as testimony, <clears throat> Is any clarification needed? Do you have any further questions? Okay. Very well then. The finding of this court martial to be affirmed must pass by two thirds. We have that. Enter your verdicts and pass the ballots to us. They've given me those ballots orally. Second Lieutenant Elijah P. Allen, in service to an unattached company of the 1st Texas State Regiment of Cavalry, was arraigned on the following charges and specifications. First charge, desertion, specification. From the evidence of the matter now before you, I say you on the charge. Is the prisoner guilty or not guilty? Substance of the specification that the accused in Highland, Texas, on the 11th of March, 1864, desert, deserted his assigned post in the service of the State of Texas and the Confederate States of America. From the evidence now before you, how say you these specifications? Is the prisoner guilty or not guilty? Second charge of specification, advising desertion. From the evidence on the matter now before you, how say you to the charge? Is the prisoner guilty or not guilty? Substance of the specification, that the accused in High Island, Texas, on the, on the 1st of March, 18, 1864, and at diverse times between that time and the 11th of March, 1864, did advise men under his command to desert their assigned post and the service of the state of Texas and the Confederate States of America. All statements of the parties thus being possession, in possession of the court, the court is, was clear for deliberation, having maturely considered the evidence, <coughs> finds Lieutenant Sec, Second Lieutenant Elijah P. Allen of the 1st Texas Regiment of Cavalry as follows. On the first charge and specification of desertion, guilty. On the second charge and specification of inciting desertion, guilty. The sentence prescribed for desertion in the Articles of War are clear. Article 20, all officers and soldiers who have received pay <clears throat> or have been duly enlisted in the service of the Confederate States shall be convicted of having ordered, deserted the same, shall suffer death, or such other punishment as by sentence of the court-martial shall be inflicted. Any non-commissioned officer or soldier who shall, without leave from his commanding officer, 
absent himself from his troop, company, or detachment, shall, upon being convicted thereof, be punished according to the nature of his offense at the discretion of the court-martial. Any officer or soldier who shall be convicted of having advised or persuaded any other officer or soldier to desert the service of the Confederate States shall suffer death or such other punishment as shall be inflicted upon him by the sentence of a court-martial. In light of the apparent epidemic of desertions of late, the court has determined that an example must be made of. The court does therefore sentence Second Lieutenant Elijah P. Allen, 1st Texas State Regiment of Cavalry, to be taken to an execution ground and be shot by musketry until dead. This will be eventually confirmed by President Jefferson Davis and all the chain of command. It is further ordered that all men in the Confederate service in Jefferson, Hardin, and Chambers counties can be spared from their duty to witness the execution and carrying out of the sentence of this court-martial. Court-martial is adjourned.
Thomas Fonseil, you recommend your servant Elijah. And now let me humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own, your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, receive him into your arms. Of your mercy and to the blessed and rest and everlasting life of peace. In your holy name. Amen. Thank you. 